Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how to create a spotlight reveal animation inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So the idea here is that we're going to be blacking out the majority of a video screen, and then a small portion of the screen is going to be revealed at a time using a vignette effect. And as the seconds go on in our video clip, we'll be able to control which portion of the video is actually going to be revealed at any given time by animating that vignette effect. So to get started, we're going to have to go to the effects library, and then you can look down at open effects, which will expand this list of effects that exist in DaVinci Resolve 16. So we need to scroll down to where we have stylize, and vignette will be towards the bottom. So stylize, and we come down here to vignette, and then you simply need to drag this onto the video clip in the timeline that you want to black out with the spotlight. So when you draw the vignette effect onto the clip, you should see the corners get a little bit darker, but by default, the majority of the clip is still very visible. So we're going to need to customize the settings over in the inspector. So make sure that you have your video clip selected and then go to the inspector. And there should be a new tab while you have the vignette effect on it called open effects. Click on that and you'll be able to modify the vignette effect. But because we're going to be manipulating the position of the vignette, we need to change the operating mode from basic to advanced. So when you do that, Settings such as center X and center Y controlling the position of the vignette are revealed. So for this tutorial, I'd like to work backwards a bit. So we're going to jump to the action moment where this woman is taking a photo, basically the frame at which the vignette should open up and reveal what's actually going on in this video shot. So I'm going to take the timeline cursor and move this forward a few seconds until that moment. So you can see at about four and a half seconds here. She starts to take her camera up to her face. And then if we go about one second more, we get the clicking of the camera button moment. So that's gonna be about where we're gonna to wanna to set our initial keyframes. Let's keyframe size. I'm not sure if we'll need to change it, but anamorphism, which is basically the ratio of height to width, we'll definitely need to keyframe center X, center Y. And we're not going to need to keyframe the softness, but we're going to want to lower that down much, much lower so that it's not so blurry and that once you get close to these edges, it actually just blackens everything outside of that edge out completely, which will make it much more like an actual spotlight in a dark room rather than a simple mild darkening of the edges. So now we'll also adjust the size and shrink it until it's about where we want it to be for this particular shot. So now we actually want to take the spotlight and make it more of a perfect circle shape. So in order to get a perfect circle out of the oval shape, we need to take anamorphism and set it to 1.0. Uh, we can probably leave it there for the remainder of this tutorial because we consistently want to maintain that shape. So now we need to work backwards, shrink the size of the spotlight because it's supposed to be kind of a hidden reveal and start animating it around the video screen. So let's go back about a second so that we can set an additional keyframe. So I'll go right around here at five seconds and I'm going to adjust the center Y to go to the top of the screen. And I'm also going to take the size and drop that down to something around let's say 0.15. And now that the keyframes are set by changing the value at a different time in the timeline, uh, we should have a quick animation going on there. So let's move it back about a second more in the timeline and hit play to see how that animation reveals the uh, lady onto the screen. So obviously you don't have to have this reveal go from top to bottom. It's really whatever directions you wanna move from. Okay, so this looks good for that particular point. After the camera button is pressed, we might decide we want to keyframe things again. So I will do a keyframe of the size and everything else at this point. And I'll go a little bit further and then I'll just increase the size to basically reveal the full video again. So by increasing the size to 1.0, it's going to basically move the vignette out of the size of the frame. And it's going to be almost as if the vignette wasn't even there. So for that point forward, we can just move on with our standard video editing. But let's actually go back a few seconds. So we have this keyframe at the top of the screen at five seconds. So let's have the spotlight move around a little bit more for the first five seconds of the video frame. So let's jump to four seconds here and manipulate the position. So I'm going to move it to the left side and then down at about uh, 0 0.5 for the center Y. So between four seconds and five seconds now, it's going to bounce from the left side to the top here. Uh, I think that might be a little bit more interesting than just having it go around one direction at a time, but rather having it kind of bounce off the corners of the screen. So if we go to three seconds, we can do the same thing, moving it now to the bottom of the screen. So 
0 0.5 for the center X and then 0 for the center Y. But now if we look at the frames between 3 and 4 seconds, we can see that it kind of misses an opportunity to reveal the camera for just a second as a uh, little bit of a teaser there. So what we can actually do is take the center Y at 3 seconds and move it up a little bit. So rather than having it be completely at the bottom, we can have it be something in between. So now if we go halfway between 3 and 4 seconds, we can actually see the camera a little bit there. And this is nice in the sense that it actually gives the viewer something to look at. So likewise, when we go back to the top of the screen at about 5 seconds, we don't have to have it be at the very top as well. We can lower it down to about 0 0.875 or so in order to make it kind of symmetric with the bottom bounce. Uh, but you can see here I actually forgot to set a keyframe there as well. So I will change the value at that uh, 5 second keyframe for the center X and make that 0 0.5. So now if we play through it, it should properly bounce from the bottom to the left side to the top side. So let's go ahead and test that here. So I'm going to hit play. Okay, there's the first bounce, the second bounce, and then the full reveal in the center of the screen. So now we just need to add a couple more bounces. Let's go to 2 seconds here and add one for the right side. So I'll take the center X to 1, I'll take the center Y to 0 0.5, and then this keyframe should set and we get that right side to bottom side, to the left side, to the top side, and then to the center bounce. Okay, so now let's, so now at one second, let's add one here at the top center. So that's going to be 0 0.5 for the X, so that's going to be 0 0.5 for the X, and let's do the center Y at 0 0.875 again. And so that we can manipulate the size at frame 0 without changing the rest of the clip, let's keyframe uh, the size at 1 second here as well. So now that we have the size set at 1 second in, uh, with a keyframe, we can go to frame 0 and animate it during that one second. So let's take the size and decrease that to basically as low as we can go. And I'll also take the center X and move that to the left side of the screen. So now it's going to increase the size, go to the center, and then bounce around the four corners of the screen before going back towards the center and opening up to reveal the full person in the shot. And then you have the camera clicking as the reveal action. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it looks now that we've pretty much finished. So going to frame zero, we're going to play it. So you have the size increase there, the four corners bounce, revealing the camera a little bit and her face. And then it goes back to the center where you get the camera click and the disabling of the vignette effect. So one more thing I wanted to add on for this video, since I'm actually going to be doing this in the edit for the intro, is that when you actually use a vertical video like was used in the rest of the tutorial, but you actually want to use it in a standard widescreen format instead of uh, tall top to bottom, then you might actually want to consider using a blanking fill effect. So that's what I'm actually going to be adding to the intro. So blanking fill you can find inside of the open effects and you can just drag that onto the same clip if you need to have it fill in the rest of the screen. So the idea here is that by using blanking fill, whenever something happens in the center, it's going to be actually putting that in a zoomed in fashion in the background or side areas as well. So the settings I'm using for this particular video clip are zoom to timeline and then the blend edges I'll probably have set pretty low because I don't want to have a lot of blur there. Uh, but the main thing will be how much you want to actually blur the background. So if you want it to be very visible, then uh, obviously take the blur background and set that to a low value or you can make it very hard to identify by increasing the blur background to a high value. But I'm probably going to have it set to something where it's still pretty clear like a let's say 0 0.15 and then that is going to give us the final effect uh, if you combine this with your vignette that looks something like this. I just thought that would be a little bit more visually interesting than just having black space on the sides of the video for the introduction to the actual tutorial here. So hopefully you guys like that extra bit of information there. So that's one way that you can use the vignette effect to tease what's going on in your video effect before you reveal it by opening up the spotlight or the simulated camera shutter to the full size where your viewer is going to be able to see everything that's going on at your action point. So that's pretty much going to be it for this tutorial using the vignette effect to create a spotlight reveal animation inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So I hope you guys got something out of this video. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.